Okay, gang, let's take a look at the normal distribution, or we refer to that a lot of times as the bell curve. The normal distribution is a special bell curve. It's by no means the only bell curve, but it's definitely the most popular bell curve out there. So normal distribution. We'll have this symbol, right? Now take note that this is an X now, right? We're not dealing with Z-scores anymore. We are not on the standard normal distribution. This is just any regular value, variable X, excuse me, any variable X. It's distributed normally, so its shape is right here. We know the shape is the bell curve. We know the mean, we know the center, and we know the standard deviation. So right here is S, C, and X. Not quite socks, we haven't figured out outliers, but shape, center, and a measure of spread, right? So shape, approximately normal, right? Mean or average for your center, right? And standard deviation for your measure of spread. And here's what your regular bell curve looks like. It looks just like the standard normal curve, but what'll be different is what's on this axis. So we won't label it with a Z anymore. We'll have an X axis. Zero won't be under the peak. It'll be whatever this number is. If it's seven, put seven. If it's negative 20, put negative 20. Whatever the mean is, it goes under the peak. And instead of popping out one, two, three, negative one, negative two, negative three, we're gonna add one standard deviation. We're gonna add two standard deviations and three standard deviations. So I'm gonna scale it with whatever this second number is. I'll go one below, two below, three below. So let's practice scaling up a PDF, and then I wanna come back and talk about how this relates to Z-scores. All right, so let me push this up just a bit so that we can see this standard normal curve, or not standard normal, just this regular normal curve. So we get some information here. We get not quite socks, but S, C, and S. So we know the shape of this norm or of this distribution is a bell curve, and I, I sketched one for you. All right, so we've got the bell curve there. We know that the center is at five, and we know the standard deviation is six. That's what this is saying. So when I say sketch the PDF, label and scale your axes, well, let's get to it. So if I wanna label these axes, I'm not using z-scores anymore. So I'm gonna label my x-axis with the letter x. All right, what number goes below the peak? The number five, because that's what it says. It says my center is five. All right, now instead of going five, six, seven, four, three, two, instead of going one unit on each side, I've been directed that, hey, my standard deviation is six. So when I go up one standard deviation, I would be at five plus six, which is 11. So let me show you how I'm getting this, right? I'm starting with five. Let me clear that out. I'm adding six to it. That is one standard deviation above the mean. Let me add another six. That would be the number 17. So here's my next tick mark. We'll even go three up and three out. A uh, three up and three back, excuse me. Let me try and make this look a little bit more symmetric. If I add another six, I would be at 23. Okay, now I'm gonna go the other way. So I'm gonna lose a standard deviation. I'm gonna start with my center of five and I'll subtract a standard deviation and get to negative one. Let me subtract another standard deviation and I'm at negative seven. Let me subtract yet another standard deviation and I'm gonna be at negative 13. Now when I look at this, it wasn't totally symmetric with it. Let me space this out just a little bit better. That seems to be spaced out a little better. These should all be equal distances from the center because we're talking about deviations. So it says label and scale your axes. I've labeled the X, I've scaled the X. Now for the Y, we've got probabilities. We don't have enough calculus to scale the Y. So when you leave your Y axis unscaled, that's fine. And when I say scaled, I mean there's no numbers. No biggie there. All right, so let's talk about Z-scores. I want you to see how this relates. 
what would the z-score of, let's go here, what would the z-score of 17 be? Well, you can see this z-score, are you with me? This is two standard deviations above the mean. So if I wanted to, this would have a z-score of two, right? This value of 11, this value of 11 was one standard deviation above the mean. That would have a z-score of one. Maybe you can see it here. What would the z-score of the data value of 23 be equal to? You would have a z-score of three. This would be a z-score of zero. This would also happen to be negative one, negative two, and negative three. So any x-axis can be rescaled to a z-axis. That's why we call it the standard normal curve. I can standardize any variable, all right? And it'll always have those z-scores. I could do the same thing on our original z curve, or on our original bell curve that I gave you. What would the z-score be if you were at the mean? Well, if you're ever at the mean, your z-score is zero because you are quite literally zero deviations from the mean, all right? What would my z-score be down here? It would have been negative three. What would my z-score be over here? It would have been positive two, right? What's my z-score here? One. My z-score here, three. Negative one, negative two, right? You can rescale any axis to the standard normal curve. That's what z-scores are telling us, right? How many standard deviations above and below the mean any one data value is. All right, so with that, let me go back to our problem. I'm gonna get this in view, and then we're gonna answer the rest of the questions that go along with this. So let me erase our z-axis so we don't conflate the numbers. All right, so let's see what we have. This one actually says, calculate the z-score when you have an x value of 17. So if we remember from, well, from earlier this chapter or from chapter two, your z-score is always a value minus a mean over a standard deviation. So in this case, I have a value of 17. I have a mean of five and I have a standard deviation of six. All right, so if I look at this, 17, all right, 17 was 12 units above the mean. It deviated from the mean by 12. That was this value's specific deviation. In relation or in ratio to the standard deviation, it was double the standard deviation. So we would say it had a z-score of two. It was two standard deviations over the mean. Okay, all right. When I ask you, what does it mean to have a positive z-score? Well, you get positive z-scores for every data value that's above the mean. So any data value above the mean will have a positive z-score. Any data value below the mean will have a negative z-score. And the data value of the mean is always zero. So what does a positive z-score mean? Data value is above the mean. All right, this is saying, hey, can you get me the z-score for x equaling one? So let's see if we can get some, some gut feelings for this and then we'll crunch the actual number. So I want you to think about x equaling one. If I move left to right along my x-axis and I'm talking about x equaling one, I want you to tell me where to stop. And I know you're not really here, but I want us to think about it, right? x equaling one, x equaling one. x equaling one is right around there because there's negative one and there's five. So positive one is closer to, to this point on my x-axis. So let me just put that here. So I think we have x being one, I'll put it a little lower, somewhere around here, all right? So I'll put it diagonal so we can look at it. So this is around x equaling one. But if we remember, and I know I erased them, Let's think about what the z-score would be. We knew the z-score here was zero. We knew the z-score here was negative one, right? Z-score here, one, two, three, negative one, negative two, negative three. So this x value of one, it looks like its z-score is between negative one and zero, and it's closer to negative one. That's what my gut feelings would tell me, but let's figure out what it actually is equal to. So my z-score is value, 
minus mean over standard deviation. So in this case, I'm looking, oh, let me scooch that up so we can all see it. All right, so I'm looking at one, my mean was five, my standard deviation was six. So this value deviated from the mean by negative four units. It was four units below the mean. All right, because the mean was five, this value was just one, it was four units below the mean. So it deviated by negative four in ratio to a standard deviation of six. So this is the fraction negative two thirds, or you could write it as a decimal, negative 0.67. And that's in line with where I thought it would be, right? I thought the z score is between negative one and zero, and I thought it was closer to negative one, okay? All right. So with that, we're going to learn about the empirical rule next, and I'll see you in a bit. Okay, bye.